Plastic waste can be turned into raw material for the production of detergents. Researchers from the University of California, Santa Barbara have developed a method that can convert the most common type of polymer used in disposable packaging into a raw material for the production of detergents. Deposits of plastic stored by us, which is not biodegradable, are becoming a bigger problem every day. And it is not enough here to limit its production. We need ways to make the most practical use of plastic waste. Because it turns out that plastic garbage can be transformed into surfactants, which are the main ingredients of detergents and other useful chemicals. If we make surfactants from fossil fuels, and they can be made from plastic waste, then we will no longer use fossil fuels to make surfactants, and the carbon that went into plastics can be used in a different way," assessed Susanna Scott from the University of California, Santa Barbara. The description and results of the research were published in the journal, Ken. A team of researchers from the University of California, Santa Barbara, has come up with a new way to reuse plastic waste. Their method could help us get rid of the single-use plastic items lying in the mountain environment. And all thanks to the fact that polyolefins are their significant component. These polymers can be converted into alkyl aromatics, which in turn are a key component of surfactants. And these are extremely important in the production of detergents. The benefit of using such a solution would be twofold. Not only would we get rid of some of the plastic, but we'd also use less of the fossil fuels that are currently used to make surfactants that it would be a much better solution than what we are currently doing with it, i.e. we store it in ever larger areas or, worse still, we burn it, probably does not need convincing. But how can plastic waste be turned into detergent? Well, the researchers suggest using the catalytic method they previously developed, which allows breaking extremely strong bonds between carbon atoms. This makes it possible to arrange the molecular chains in such a way that we can obtain alkyl aromatic rings as a result. However, the previously proposed solution to use platinum on alumina as a catalyst for this process was not very efficient. However, scientists managed to improve the above method. It turned out that the secret here was to increase the acidity level of the aluminum oxide while adding chlorine or fluorine. In the latest research, the team also focused on obtaining the optimal ratio of the acid part to the metal part of the catalyst. In this simple way, it was possible not only to speed up the production of alkyl aromatics, but also to obtain a more correct particle size. To what extent the scientists managed to optimize the entire process is best evidenced by numerical data. Until now, it took up to 24 hours to produce the key ingredients for the subsequent production of detergents. Currently, this process has been shortened to just a few hours. This will also make it possible to process more plastic waste faster. An additional advantage of the improved process is that it does not require high temperatures. And therefore the necessary energy input is not too high. The improvements made to this method give scientists grounds to believe that it may gain commercial potential. In this way, we could obtain soap, washing liquids or various cleaning agents, and the elimination of as much plastic as possible, even in the way presented here, is in the best interest of humanity.
Changes in the brains of migraine sufferers have been identified. Hope for new therapies. Migraine sufferers have specific brain changes, new research shows. Using ultra-high resolution magnetic resonance imaging. The researchers found that the perivascular spaces in the brain are significantly enlarged in patients who experience both chronic and episodic migraine. These findings could open up new avenues for further research into the treatment of this devastating disease. Researchers at the University of Southern California, Los Angeles, have identified enlarged perivascular spaces in the brains of migraine sufferers. Perivascular spaces, also known as virchow robin spaces, are fluid-filled spaces that surround blood vessels in the brain. They are most often located in the area of the basal ganglia, in the white matter. In the thalamus, midbrain, cerebellum, hippocampus and along the visual pathway. Perivascular spaces are affected by several factors, including abnormalities in the blood-brain barrier and inflammation. They can be a sign of many diseases, including dementia or high blood pressure and, according to new research, also play a role in migraines. The only question is whether this mechanism is the effect or the cause of the disease. The scientists' findings presented at the 108th meeting of the Radiological Society of North America may represent an as yet unexplored avenue for future research. Perhaps thanks to this, it will be possible to develop effective therapies for migraines. Migraine is a common, often debilitating condition involving severe, recurrent headaches that vary in severity and frequency. Migraines can also cause nausea, weakness, and photophobia. Sometimes there is also excessive sensitivity to sounds and smells. In migraine, there is aura, which is characterized by scotoma. Visual field defects, paresthesias, paresis, or aphasia. According to the American Migraine Foundation, more than 37 million people suffer from migraines in the United States alone. In people with chronic and episodic migraine without the so-called aura, there are significant changes in the perivascular spaces in an area of the brain called the center semioval. These changes have never been reported before, said Wilson Zhu, a doctoral student at the Keck School of Medicine at the University of Southern California in Los Angeles and a co-author of the study. The perivascular spaces are part of the brain's fluid removal system. Studying how they contribute to migraines may help us better understand the complexity of migraine formation, he added. Sue and his colleagues wanted to see if enlarged perivascular spaces had anything to do with migraine. They used ultra-high field magnetic resonance imaging to compare structural microvascular changes in different types of migraine. To our knowledge, this is the first study to use ultra-high resolution MRI to study microvascular changes in the brain caused by migraine particularly in the perivascular spaces. Because this type of scan is able to produce much higher resolution and better quality images of the brain than other types of MRI, it can be used to show much smaller changes in brain tissue after a migraine, Zhu said. The study involved 10 people with chronic migraine, 10 with episodic migraine without aura and five healthy volunteers as controls. The study participants were between 25 and 60 years old. Analysis of MRI scans showed that the number of enlarged perivascular spaces in the center of the semi-oval was significantly greater in migraine patients compared to controls. 
In addition, enlarged perivascular spaces in the semioval center correlated with the severity of white matter arousal in migraine patients. We studied chronic migraine and episodic migraine without aura and found that in both types of migraine, perivascular spaces were larger in the center of the semi-oval, Zhu said. The researchers hypothesized that significant differences in perivascular spaces in migraine patients compared to healthy controls could suggest glymphatic disorders in the brain. The glymphatic system is a brain waste disposal system that uses perivascular channels to eliminate metabolites from the central nervous system. A disorder of the glymphatic system would mean that the brain is unable to clean itself properly, leading to a buildup of waste that can be toxic to the brain. However, it is not known whether these changes contribute to the development of migraine or are the result of it. Continuation of research on a larger group and long-term follow-up of patients will allow to better characterize the relationship between structural changes and the development and type of migraine. The results of our study may help inspire future larger-scale studies to determine how changes in the brain's microscopic vessels and blood supply contribute to different types of migraine. Ultimately, this could help us develop new, personalized ways to diagnose and treat migraines, Zhu said.